friends what comes to your mind when you hear the word environment the simplest thing which one can say about an environment is a surrounding here let us just assume that we all are sitting in a park anything and everything we can see in this park are all part of our environment now let us just list down few things that we see here in this park like people sitting or walking around children playing the lush green grasses plants trees the tiny insects birds the benches swings playground slides etc these are few objects which are placed near or around us and they all are part of a surrounding a surrounding can also be like a locality like some place where the park is located it can be a country and on a much broader term a planet earth itself now that we have listed the things we see in this park if we observe the things to our left all have something in common they have life in them or they perform various life processes like eating breeding reproduction etc so we call them all as living organisms which in other terms are also called as biotic components biotic because the word bios means life and the things which we listed down to our right does not have life in them so we call them as non living organisms or the abiotic components abiotic because it has no life since now we know what environment consists of we can easily define what environmental science is learning about environmental science actually means to understand how nature works to understand the various interactions of different components of our environment and also to find how we humans affect our environment to understand it further here we shall look at how plants grow as we all know plants they take in carbon dioxide from the air water from the soil and sunlight to make their food through chemical process and this process is known as photosynthesis and also these plants serve as food for higher animals so we can say all the biotic components constantly interact or exchange things with each other as well as the abiotic components for their survival or existence the plants are just a small aspect of our environment but if we consider a much larger or broader aspect like a planet earth let us see how the various components work on a broader scale i'm sure that you all have seen the picture of a planet earth although it looks like one large structure it has many different features now if we take the entire land surface on the earth and club it together we get a separate sphere called lithosphere similarly the air surrounding our earth surface can be taken as one sphere called atmosphere the bluish part on our globe which indicates the water surface it would form another sphere called hydrosphere and also the various life forms on the earth like plants animals microorganisms and we humans are part of another sphere called biosphere when these four spheres combine it gives us the entire large sphere which is a planet earth and from these four spheres itself man gets all useful things that satisfy many of his day to day requirements like The lithosphere which is a land component is useful to man for carrying out agricultural activities constructing houses we also get many useful minerals from the soil similarly the hydrosphere which provides us with water in different forms 
which is useful for drinking, washing, cleaning, for agriculture, for industries. The air which we breathe, sunlight, weather, wind are all obtained from the atmosphere. The food which we eat, firewood, are obtained from biosphere. Friends, if you observe, all these things are obtained from our nature and are very much useful to us and hence we call it all as natural resources. Here if you split the term, the meaning is very simple. Natural means from the nature and resource means something which is of use to us. But for satisfying his increasing demands, man is continuously using these resources and hence they are depleting at a much faster rate. Our planet Earth has its own way to replenish many of these resources. That means Earth can get back many of the resources into existence. But this replenishing rate is slow as compared to the speed in which it is getting consumed. So, the various activities which man does affects the balance between the four spheres. Like, forest is an important resource and we are cutting down forest for land and the various forest products. And when the forest cover is destroyed, it would affect rainfall, which in turn will affect agricultural production. So when in this way the balance is disturbed, it directly or indirectly affects all living and non-living components. And some of the consequences arising out of man's activities are which we hear in our present day life. Like the cases of pollution, global warming, ozone depletion, climate change. We also hear about natural disasters like the very recent incidents of earthquakes and tsunami in Japan. A very severe cyclonic storm, Hood Hood, hit the states of Andhra Pradesh and Odisha in India. A powerful typhoon, Hagopit, that hit central Philippines. What does all these indicate? Is it the Mother Earth who has changed? Or is it we humans? Here we must think on what our Mother Earth is providing us and what are we giving her in return. Friends, the four spheres which we just learned are the basis of all environmental processes and they all have unique properties which we will know in details in our coming sessions. I hope you liked this session. For watching our coming sessions, do subscribe. Till we meet the next time, keep watching, keep learning. Thank you.